Howdy, everybody. Welcome to uh, wing video number 24. Um, I will do the rear spar for the right wing in this video. Um, and it is uh, basically a complete rear spar. So you'll see it from start to finish. So you'll notice that the rear spar there doesn't have any um, primer on it, basically starting from the bare metal. Um, and what you do is you add in those doubler plates and there are a bunch of holes in those doubler plates. You can kind of see them all right there. Um, and then you have to make sure you get the top ones as well. But you drill out the doubler plates, make sure they line up. You'll have to cut the hole out for the um, bar for the aileron in one of them. Um, and I don't think I get that in this video, so I don't think you'll actually see me cutting out that hole. But I do cut out the hole um, and you, you won't see me priming it either. But here in a little bit, you'll be like, oh, wait a minute. You went from working on a bare sheet of metal to now it's primed and you're attaching it to the wing. So... I try to cut out some of the stuff that you guys already know and have already seen a million and a half times, trying not to waste your time too much anyway, even though, I mean, let's be honest, watching videos of me making a plane is not the uh, most fun in the world, let's just say that much. But it is, you know, somewhat, uh, it might help you, hopefully. So, and then this is the very end doubler that goes on the, the far side. And I, I don't know the engineering behind it because they have you cut the tab off of that last rib and then you double the, um, you have a doubler on the rear spar, but then when you hook the rear spar to the rib, you don't actually hook the rear spar to the rib. You hook the aileron attach bracket to the rear spar, which then attaches to the rib. So it's kind of crazy that way. Okay, so I was reading the instructions and it's been a while since I've done the left wing and now I'm working on the right wing and I had figured this out before but I'm old and I forget things and so the instructions say machine countersink the holes in the upper flange of the rear spar web that corresponds to the doubler plates. So all of these get countersunk okay where the where that doubler plate is those get countersunk these will get countersunk for a skin so I have my handy dandy little because they're number 40 drills I have my piece of skin with a dimple on it and so the the countersink is a little bit deeper for a skin dimple than it would be for like a um, 426 um, 83 right yeah the 426-83 whatevers um, those aren't as countersunk as as deep and then it has it says to look at figure two and figure two has a thing that says machine countersink for a dimple a dimpled 0 .020 0 0.5 millimeter skin and I was like, what in the world are they talking about? Well, the reason why they say that is because that is these holes right here. Okay. These will get countersunk for um, an AD4 rivet. These need countersunk for the number 30 skin because the skin is going to attach there. And so the, the countersink is slightly different for this row than it is for this row. So just be aware, that's what they're talking about. See ya. So obviously you have to pay attention to the, like the instructions because they, they are correct most of the time. There are, I found some minor errors in them, but they do, um, like call out like different things and those particular countersinks in the rear spar in the the doubler the second doubler on the rear spar they are different and so that's why they call them out and give you kind of an oddball dimension 
and you're like, hey, wait a minute, they usually just say countersink it for this kind of rivet, but now they're giving me a dimension. Well, the reason why is because they're two different sizes and they don't want you to countersink for the rivets in both of them. They need you to countersink for the rivets in the bottom row and then countersink for the, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's the kind of like the wind break piece. I'm not even sure what they call that. It's the W00010 um, piece of metal that fits kind of where the aileron and the flap kind of move up into place. And those, that particular skin, you'll need to countersink that third row of rivets on the rear spar um, slightly differently, a little bit deeper because it's a skin fitting in there, not just the, the, not just the rivet. So that's why it's there. Show you a quick picture here real quick. Um, and you, you see it kind of hooks into that third row there. Yeah, and that is section like section 20. So it's like five sections ahead of where you're at. And so sometimes they have you do things in preparation for things that are coming up, you know, four or five, six sections later. So you have to kind of read through all the plans, kind of see where things hook together, to get them to all, you know, to kind of make sense. If you don't read ahead in the plans, you'll eventually come to the spot and you'll be like, oh, that's why I did that. And that's okay, too. So I figured I would give you a airplane joke today. So here's my airplane joke. So what do you call a criminal landing an airplane? Condescending. <laughs> Condescending. That's so stupid. That's just really bad. <laughs> okay, so let me do one more. Maybe a little bit better. We'll see if this one's a little bit better for you. So what did the lunchbox say to the refrigerator? Don't hate me because I'm a little cooler. <laughs> that one is fantastic. Oh my goodness. Oh, don't hate me because I'm a little cooler. Oh, I love dad jokes. They're fantastic. So here is just attaching the doublers on the end of the um, rear spar. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. Um, and you will notice as you prime parts, the primer gets inside the holes that you've already final sized. Um, Cause I've drilled out all of those holes when I attached it the first time, you know, you go, the instructions say to final size it. When you actually do the prime though, it does make them a little bit like the primer can get in those holes. And so that's why you see me drilling out the holes every now and again. Um, just to clean the primer out, not necessarily to drill the hole. It's just to get the primer kind of out of the hole so the rivet fits correctly. <clears throat> and then the two flanges on the rear spar, one goes one way, one goes the other way. And so with your, um, your Longeron yoke, uh, the, your deep yoke there, you can do both sides. You just have to flip the... You just flip the um, the die set so the flat piece is on the other side instead of the curved over piece because those are all um, universal rivets, the 470 rivets on the doubler and the, the second doubler plate there. <clears throat> and then you just put those together. You attach the um, the little doubler plates for the um, flap bracket and the hinge the aileron hinge bracket um, you'll see the aileron hinge bracket right there I have it kind of clicoed in right now um, so the flat bracket goes on the the other one there and you will see I have made a mistake and you guys stop the video right now and see if you can notice it because I'm gonna tell you here in a quick second what I did wrong because I did mess up okay do you see my mistake? Do you see my mistake? I will show you my mistake. You see how these have none in them? And that those are there? Yeah, all four of those have to come out. Because I'm an idiot. But that's okay, I won't do them here. So yes, I was, that, that third row of rivets on the rear spar is to attach the, um, that extra, 
Well, let me get you the name of that thing. Okay, it is called the aileron and flap gap fairing. Um, and so it takes up that extra space where your aileron and your flap kind of fold up into the wing. Um, and that is the, um, that fits, that hooks to the rear spar in that third row of rivets. And there's, they're all empty and you're supposed to leave them all empty. And it says to leave them empty in the instructions, but I was dumb and filled them in. So, I mean, not much you can do about it. You just, you make mistakes every now and again and you go back, you drill the rivet out and you're good to go. You'll fix it and move on. So here is attaching the um, rear spar. It's relatively simple. There's only three rivets per rib. Um, and you can get most all of them with your um, Longeron yoke. Almost all of them, except for the ones that attach to the um, aileron bracket. Those you have to use your, like a six or a seven inch, um, what is it, the six or seventh inch, one eighth, or, no, three, yeah, one eighth. Um, straight uh what's it called rivet thing that goes in your rivet gun um because you need it long enough so it goes past the edge of the um the aileron bracket so you can stay straight on the rivet and make it nice so just be prepared you will have you can't use your i tried a million different ways and it would not fit with the the yoke on the squeezer and I, I like the squeezer because it's very consistent. All of your rivets are going to look the same. Um, and once you size one of them, you're good to go. You know that all of the rest of them are good to go. You don't have to check them. Um, but when you use your rivet gun and your bucking bar, you you do have to kind of check them more often. And you, you kind of get used to looking at them and you can kind of tell which ones are good and which ones are bad. But still, it's... It's much easier to use the squeezer. It's much more consistent. But the uh, rivet gun is fun, I do have to say. And then you basically just attach the rear spar to all of the ribs. And then the next section is um, the skins, the top skins for the, uh, for the right wing. And you'll see me break out the rivet gun here for that. And you'll notice too on the for the aileron bracket that is a service bulletin, so the it is fixed with the service bulletin. Um, I'll put the service bulletin number kind of up on the screen so you can see it. But the new service bulletin has that extra little bracket you can kind of see next to the hole. Here I'll circle it for you. Um, and that extra little bracket is the service bulletin part of the aileron bracket. And that's pretty much it for this video. We'll close it out with me uh, talking to you. Talk to you guys later. See ya. Bye. So that, so that is, what page is that? Page 1504. The rear spar has been riveted and is attached. Um, the next is the skins. The top skins. So it looks like that one. So. See ya, bye.